This was an older design anyway. Yeah, they so wanted they to just wanted it to be gone. They wanted get to get the, the information and, yep. and then move on. And everybody's happy. <laughs> and uh, Ellie has interviewed a lot of the Musk family. They're all happy here. I'm just really proud of the SpaceX team. We launched a, uh, well, I think it's about a 440 foot story uh, rocket, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which is just mind boggling, 30 feet wide. To watch it go um, up, you know, uh, obviously we'll get all the test data, we'll get everything we need to, to make the next one more successful. But yeah, just an amazing success and just can't be more excited for, for the for Earth. Now that the dust or concrete has settled on the historic first Starship launch that happened to fall on 420, I wanted to make this recap video of some of the interviews from people around the world that were there for the launch and also tell you some new updates that we learned from Elon Musk following the Starship launch. First of all, according to Elon, the launch was a success. It actually went better than he was expecting it to go. And despite these pictures and videos of the pad looking, well, terrible, he says the damage is actually quite minimal. I guess you can't judge a book by its cover or a launch tower by its crater. I mean, the, the, at, at a high level, the, the super cool thing here is that, hey, this thing, this thing kind of works. Um, and, and we're going to solve the issues that are remaining and uh, we'll get it to orbit and we'll, we'll make it reusable. And... That, that means that, that we have a, a real path here to get humanity to Mars. It's like uh, called Xinjian. Starship is uh, in Chinese language, it's Xinjian. Speaking of people from around the world, meet Angela. She actually waited until SpaceX got the license from the FAA and then booked her travel all the way from Shanghai to Brownsville. Actually, I fly from Shanghai to Hong Kong and then LA. LA Dallas are here, finally. Wow. It's a long, long trip. Oh, I'm really excited to see the Starship and the Super Heavy. Yeah, and uh, I think it's not long for human beings to Mars. Really different from the, like, the videos online. When I'm here to see it, it's really significant. I don't think there's a word that can describe it, but holy crap. Yes. Maybe I'll say that like 20 times. Maybe that will be enough. This is way larger than what I expected. Yeah. And I saw it like, I saw pictures of it, videos of it, I even saw it in VR. And saw it take off in VR, but this is so much better. Yeah. I know I read a lot of details about it, like the fact they can build those things, like in a matter of months. And don't have to spend $1.8 billion, it's crazy to me. Kevin, who was originally from China and going to school in Indiana, says he really appreciates the transparency of the American space industry compared to China's space industry. In China, the space news is really limited, so there's a lot of accounts have a lot of rumors going on. It makes things more interesting or less interesting, I will let you decide, but a lot of people, a lot of information, a lot of speculations, and a lot of things going on. Uh, as someone who's really evolved, I really like what they are doing, but nothing as close as this. Which country do you think will get to Mars first? I think probably this. Yeah. I don't think we China don't have a plan yet. I don't yeah. think they're gonna be on pace with this, like not even close. But I want to see more competitions going on for sure. The fact that we are going to Mars, that's crazy to me. And we need to keep civilization alive. A lot of this recent information from Elon came through an exclusive Twitter space for subscribers only. I have my question ready. Be quiet. I can't deal with you meowing, Pinocchio. If you ruin this for me. <sighs> but one of the things that he stressed is that support from the public is essential. It's also one of the reasons that I was a little bit annoyed seeing the follow-up coverage by the mainstream media after the Starship launch. It seemed as though everyone wanted to focus on the explosion and didn't understand the significance of this historic flight. SpaceX putting on a brave face, you heard all that applause, calling it a successful failure does raise some questions though about NASA's timeline for a planned return to the moon. Discuss more. Let's bring in Chris Hadfield, Canadian astronaut extraordinaire, former commander of the International Space Station, author of The Apollo Murders and the upcoming book, The Defector. Hey, Chris, good to see you. 
Good to see you as well. And yeah, you say people are putting on a brave face. You have it completely wrong, Todd. This was an enormously successful test flight. I, I used to be a, a test pilot in the Royal Canadian Air Force and the U.S. Navy and the U.S. Air Force. This was a terrific day. We learned an enormous amount, and it really bodes well for the future. Whoa! Oh, and that lean that you saw? Yeah, that was not according to plan. On the uh, launch site itself, it looks like it kind of slid a little bit off the pad instead of going like straight vertical like Falcon does. Was that part of the profile or was that because of the engine failures? Uh, that's because of engine failures. Uh, yeah. Some of the other details that I learned from Elon during his Twitter space is that he expects them to be able to launch or at least have a rocket and pad ready in six to eight weeks. He says their longest lead item will be requalifying their flight termination system, simply because it took way too long to rupture those tanks. Of course, they need the rocket to explode immediately if flight termination is necessary. So what can we expect for the next flight? Well, they plan to be taking off faster. They will also be using Booster 9, which is much newer and has significant improvements from Booster 7. Of course, they're also expecting not to dig a hole on the next launch. They plan to do this instead of relying on Fondag, a very strong concrete material, but now using a steel pancake, aka a water-cooled steel plate. Elon is confident that the steel plate will work just as well as a flame trench would have. I guess we'll have to see how it goes. Elon says they're still hoping they can get four or five flights out of this year, 2023. He says he'd be surprised if we exit this year without getting to orbit. On the next flight, they'll cut down that engine start time from five seconds to 2.5 seconds. He says you'll also see hot dog shaped tanks, so horizontally placed tanks instead of the vertically placed tanks that got damaged during this first launch. And he says that's actually something they wanted to do anyway. It seems that he's able to find a lot of silver linings in the launch. Now, Elon will do another updated Twitter space in a few weeks and we'll learn more details, including the exact configuration of the next flight. But one of the reasons that I wanted to share some of this information is that he really says support from the public, you guys, is essential. Thanks for help bringing the, the public along for the ride because you know, at the end of the day, if we, if the support of the public is, is essential. And so I'm hoping that by covering the Starship launch and future of the Starship program, I'm able to help educate the public on why this is so important for humanity and also exciting. Well, it's not only crazy to stand here and see how massive it is and see it fully stacked, but to know that tomorrow it could be gone. I know, right? I we mean, hope. <laughs> in a good way. Gone in a good way. <laughs> yeah. With the tower still here, yeah. ideally. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite parts of the trip was not only meeting people from around the world that made the pilgrimage to see Starship go in person, but I also was able to meet a lot of these space YouTubers that, of course, I follow online and interact with on a regular basis. I even met several people who also have broken their femur, so it was interesting to have people come up to me and share their story about recovery. Okay. All right. We're getting there. Yeah, we are. And it's just a little windy. <laughs> yeah, Mother Nature sometimes. To celebrate over 10 million views on my Alien Space channel, I decided to launch a Falcon 9 model rocket uh, made by Estes, and I did it with Joe Tegmeyer and Ann Chinnery. She was one of the first SpaceX employees. The only issue was it was super windy the day that we tried to launch. You'll probably understand why a lot of rockets get scrubbed due to weather. However, I want to know, do you think that we were able to successfully launch and recover the rocket? I guess you'll have to wait and find out in my next video. Thank you so much for watching this video. It still has been such a dream to be able to cover Starship in the way that we were able to and also have such a rewarding journey on this channel. So thank you to everyone who supports Ellie in Space. I'll see you in the next video.